Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Hope everybody had a pretty good trading day. Um, very surprised today. I, I, I was very, very surprised uh, about uh, the actual value today. If you guys remember uh, going into today, last night's video, uh, we talked about kind of a 50-50 scenario. Yesterday, we had that very, very aggressive pull uh, at the open. Again, they blamed it on manufacturing. Uh, this morning, when you woke up, um, you know, depending what time you woke up, you saw the futures down, you know, 100, 150 points on the Dow. Uh, then it got down to 200 points in the Dow because uh, Trump basically said that, hey, you know, maybe a deal doesn't need to get done uh, before uh, 2020. So futures are all over the place, right? And we saw talked about last night that, the charts were so messed up that I basically had, I had literally zero expectations for today. I, again, we didn't know if the market was going to gap up, gap down, or anything in between. And we kind of got our answer. And the market did both. The market did exactly uh, what it did yesterday. But what could have made this day, and it, was, it actually turned out to be a pretty decent day, uh, some pretty good you know, cash flow moves all over the place. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. But... What would have made this day really good if this market would have just kind of opened flat or up a little bit, down a little bit, because the aggressive nature at the open, they kept on taking down the Dow, down 300, down 350, down 400. And remarkably enough, and this is where the new market is kind of completely different than 10 years ago. Uh, 10 years ago, if you would have saw a tape, the Dow down 400 points, you wouldn't get an uptick. Okay, You wouldn't literally get an uptick on any stocks. Again, again, that was just the dynamics of trading back then, 10, 15, even 20 years ago. Now you have the market down 400 points. And again, the indexes, like I've been saying for years, they don't matter anymore. You had an ing incredibly aggressive move today in shop. You had an incredibly uh, aggressive move today on Roku, right? You had names that were just steadily holding, right? Holding rising support off opening ranges. It just kept on grinding, 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 grinding higher. Uh, even a stock like Amazon, that there was a you know very aggressive pivot to the downside today, right? And we'll talk about that again in a few minutes off this uh, 62 area that traded perfectly into this 48, 49 area, even woke up, right? I, I tweeted this out uh, right before I logged in, uh, logged out. I, I didn't get a piece of this last move here, but I said, hey, if you know Amazon can start reclaiming 1758, 1759, it could start turning around. So you started seeing the same pattern over and over again in the last two days. You got the sell-off, right? Sell-off, uh, they, they hold the fort on rising support. Even if they lost the rising support, they kind of remounted and reclaimed it later and just started grinding back the later today. Again, this is kind of a, a, a mirror image what happened yesterday, right? Gap down, grind back up, grind back down, grind back up. And you can look at every single stock. And again, if you try to you know make heads or tails of what these, this action is telling us, Again, you're overthinking. Okay, remember that you're overthinking. It, it, it when you look at price action in the most purest form, it's not the repetition of what happened in previous days. It's what's going to happen next. And again, if you believe in the theory that supply to supply to demand to demand, then you you, you kind of see with your naked eye that again, cues they ran back to supply and got rejected. Now tomorrow we're going to get an understanding of what the market might do for the latter part of the week. If we gap down and start getting rejected off uh, these areas that we saw in the last few days, then we know we're gonna roll over and go back lower. But it would kind of be nice, right? It really kind of would be nice if we get kind of a flat open tomorrow. Uh, again, most of the charts are still a mess. A lot of names uh, did get hit pretty hard and did not recover. Uh, such names like Netflix. Netflix is only several bucks uh, off its lows. It stopped perfectly today at the 302, obviously. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes, but you really get a good sense of how important it is to trade your individual process and kind of filter out the noise with the indexes with Trump and the, all these macro uh, headlines. And once that price action kicks in, 
you're usually going to have some good results. The problem is, like I've been saying for years, most traders they don't get them, you know, they don't give themselves enough opportunity um, to to reach their potential because again, they're they're trading the market exactly the same way. They're looking at the indexes for a guide, and yes, indexes are uh, very very important, and they are a guide. But just remember it; they're only a guide. Okay, they don't mean and they don't define uh, the way your trading day is going to play out because again, if if you looked at the Dow down 300, 400 points, how can you ever buy anything, right? How can you ever uh, put on a position on the long side on any type of conviction? But again, we are in a very, very specialized, specific uh, market right now. And this is why uh, the market in the last several years has been so different. Indexes have been sometimes completely disconnected off price action. Uh, but again, the most important and common denominator every single day is whatever your process you're trading, stick to it. Okay, don't deviate from it. Don't you know? Don't prostitute your money uh, for you know for the love of the game. Okay, which there shouldn't be any love. Again, that's the whole point of emotional detachment. And again, every single day, like I said this morning, right? Like I said completely this morning on the feed, I say, hey, look, you got to stay very patient today. Okay, value if they start confirming yesterday's channels. Uh, that grind up towards the end of the day yesterday it did nobody any good, right? Did nobody any good. Remember, you don't need to trade every day. Understanding what's uh, up against you before the trade uh, the day is, is starting is incredibly value. Uh, that's incredibly vital. That's the discipline. Good morning. And, and again, what's amazing about uh, today's day, it actually turned into a pretty good day for cash flow. And again, that's all we were looking for today. I wasn't looking to... Uh, reinvent the wheel. Hell, I even traded the Q's today, right? I even traded the Q's today. So that, that's kind of, you know, you had to kind of really manufacture runs uh, and have an opinion, kind of have an alternative way. Again, when was the last time I traded the Q's? So, uh, you know, it, was, it turned out to be okay. It actually turned out to be okay. So let's talk about it pivot by pivot. Uh, Amazon, this morning, uh, we talked about uh, 1762, 1761. If it builds below, uh, it can flush. So here was the Amazon chart. Here's the Amazon chart right here, right? Here's the pivot right here, uh, 1762. It started building. I said, you know, this is a puncher shot. It gets down to the 1749, uh, 1750 level. And again, it got right down to the lower Bollinger Band, roughly 1747 and change. Um, you know, and then again, there was a nice pivot to the upside. And some of you guys uh, took the move to, towards the end, end as well. So good job there on Amazon. Uh, Netflix, this is exactly where it stopped today. 302 is daily support. If it starts building below, it got the 302 bounced right away. So it's a very, very important area there to watch uh, going forward. Uh, KRTX, again, 79 to the upside, 69 to the downside. Never built, right? Never even got close to uh, either of those, uh, which, again, I, I kind of do believe there will be another trade in this KRTX. It's just kind of the channels need to squeeze down a little bit. Um, BYND, again, I mean, the stock just grinds lower. You know, 77 we talked about yesterday's low. Uh, 76 macro, huge area if it needs to build uh, to go lower. Uh, this is now officially the lowest close uh, underneath, right? Underneath this channel. And if you look at uh, BYND, the only thing that saved it today was this uh, Bollinger Band. This thing starts confirming this Bollinger Band will go lower. 77 went all the way down to uh, 75.40. I have to assume this thing loses 75 tomorrow. It will test the 52 week lows of 73.80s and then. Uh, start its next leg down. But again, a move is a move is move. Uh, shop, sneaky area to the downside. If it builds below, it can flush. Obviously, it never did. We'll talk about flu we'll talk about uh, shop in a few minutes. You'll see a monster, monster pivot back to the upside. Uh, Qs, 200 macro level. If it builds below, it can flush. Again, experienced traders only. I say that because trading an ETF is completely different than trading a stock. You, you have millions and millions and millions of shares both long and short, buy, you know, dip buyers sell, you know, selling their shorts, selling their longs. So it's a completely different animal. Nice cash flow trade there. Uh, I shorted a $200 break. Um, you know, again, good cash flow. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I shorted the 200 break. Here's a 200 break pre-market, right? Shorted the $200 break for you know, some decent cash flow, really quick, decent cash flow. Uh, nothing wrong there. Uh, Roku, right? Uh, Roku, I, listen, I completely minimized this trade, but I'm happy. Look, Again, at the beginning of the day, if you said, turn around and say, hey, look, you're going to catch the cues, you're going to catch some Roku in the morning, blah, 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 will you be okay with that? I would sign up for it. So, we, you know, I, I looked at this 41, they got upgraded. I looked at this 41 area. I said, hey, guys, I think it give quick cash flow, nothing more, nothing less, because again, the market was tanking. I just didn't believe it. If you guys remember, the day before Apple got upgraded, they sold it. 
Tesla this morning, they got upgraded, right? They went red on the day. So I was like, ah, you know, Roku's going to do the same thing. So I said, hey, if you want a quick trade at 41 break. So here's the 41, you know, here's the 41 break right here, right? Here's the 41 break. So I sold it into supply and I thought I sold it perfectly. I was so happy about it. I was like, oh, wow, perfect trade. In, in, in 10 seconds, everything was great. And then I look up, right? I look up, it, it hits supply, goes down, you know, goes down like 50, 60 cents or so. And then it just like, I took my eyes off it for like a split second and the stock just goes up another dollar and change, excuse me, or $2 and change. So minimize, yes. But again, at the end of the day, your, your job is not to make a lot of money. Your job is to make, you know, your job is to have, you take, take your money, right? And see if you could come back with some more of its friends. Again, there's no, that, that's why the whole theory of setting a goal for yourself is ridiculous. You're just trying to be upright. You're trying to stay solvent until you get that really clean move uh, into uh, the goal line. So, you know, that was fine as well. Uh, yeah, bingo. Bingo was like in, in 10 seconds, uh, 15 seconds. It just kept on going and going and going. Um, yeah, never closed, obviously, under 1750, but that was the... That was the move, the measure move to 1750. Um, yeah, cover some, it's at support. And that's exactly what it did. And then it kind of woke, woke back up. Um, yeah, it, it got down, uh, the Q's trade got down to like 9930s. Uh, again, it wasn't the biggest move, but here is definitely the biggest move of the day. Uh, shop, right? Shop the levels it needs to build. Uh, 334 and 336 and the potential to 342 if the market gets better. Again, here's another example uh, here's another example that the market didn't need to get better. Okay, the stock started exploding way before the market got better. Again, price action over uh, indexes. And again, this is what we talked about in shop. Here are the levels uh, that we talked about. So here is the initial move into supply, which was 334. So it needed to confirm 334, and then it needed to confirm 336. And here's where supply. I was talking about supply here at 342. It got to supply at 342. And sold off three dollars, and then again, when I logged off at the end of the day, it ran up another six. So crazy move on shop. You know, great job, guys. Absolutely great job on there. Um, yeah, you know, here three forty two, three forty three on deck. I mean, so good move there. Um, BYND uh, seventy seven lows. Yeah, you know, basically fist pump. It's at the lows of the day. I still think this thing goes lower. And here's where you know, in, again, here's where we don't care which way the market goes. It doesn't make a difference to us. So here is a pivot that never obviously got triggered. I was looking at uh, I was looking at the 141 pivot right here, right? If this candle would have confirmed off that 141, oh, excuse me, 141, if it would have confirmed right here, the stock would have turned around and went down to the 40s and never did. Again, that's why you don't anticipate a trade. You wait for the confirmation. And obviously the stock turned around on a dime and went higher. Um, so that was that, uh, just again, just to show you an example, and this is just the option flow, uh, for today's session. Um, so again, again, surprisingly a pretty solid, you know, pretty solid action day today. A again, going into every single trading day, you have a, you have an opinion. I, you know, based on last night's video and last, and this morning's morning strategy, I, I didn't have an opinion of how, how aggressive this day could have been. It could have been a really, really, um, really passive day. And, and again, we would have been okay with that. Okay. It was just very, very fortunate that we did have some opportunities, uh, very, very aggressive moves. Um, if you are a new trader, again, you have to let your mind kind of play catch up to the price action to kind of dissect everything. Uh, but it's very, very important just again, just to take your time. So, uh, let's talk about, uh, tomorrow's action. Uh, I'd like some longs, I'd like some shorts, obviously. Uh, let's start off with, uh, CDLX. Right, CDLX uh, finally breaking out of this whole channel here. Uh, you can see here broke out of the $60 area, put in a high today of $61.90. Again, this thing starts reclaiming $62. Again, you have a possible really, really big, big continuation move. So again, something like this, you're either looking for the 62 break or you're looking for a washout dip in the morning to buy it on rising support. So keep an eye on CDLX. Um, I like blue. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.